It's time for the championship edition of the Candlepin Challenge, produced by CNA in conjunction with the International Candlepin Bowling Association. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back inside the Woburn Bowlerdrome. John Holt with Dan Murphy, and this is it. A collection of three heavy hitters, really an all-star game, our championship show. Absolutely, and if they bring their A game, we're in for a treat today. If you had picked a dozen bowlers, certainly these three would be mentioned in any of those top bowlers in the game. But uh, everything is in play. All the bonus money is still in play. Triple strike is still in play, and Dan Gothier is watching that intently, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, everything's in play. We're just waiting for a great show. John Zappi had the best score from the two best two game total from the season. He gets the bye into the championship match. We'll speak with him in just a second. But first, to uh, meet and introduce, reintroduce to very qualified challengers, we say hello to Trina Fernandez. Trina? Hello, John. Thank you very much. I don't feel like I need to introduce you guys because everybody knows you so well, but I guess I should. We've got Jeff Surrett and Bob Whitcomb. And Jeff, you know, we were just talking, I was actually just talking to Dan Murphy, and he was telling me that, and in the game today, in the top 15, he would rank all three of you. So we really do have an all-star game going on. It's an exciting day for Candlepin Bowling. You're going for the three-peat here. You kind of squeaked in at the last minute. Do you feel lucky to be here today? Oh, definitely lucky. I mean, just to make it three three is in a row is it's good in my book. So uh, it'd be nice to win again. Well, nice to win again. $5,000 to the winner. Second place gets 2500 And you get 1000 just for being in this, this one string. A lot of money on the line. How do you look at this one string? I uh, just got to get out and uh, knock every pin down. Hopefully get a whole bunch. I know I'm going to need it. You're not going to need any luck. I'm not worried about you at all. Good luck today, Jeff. And Bob, friend of the show. You've been in the finals before. Are you nervous? No, not really. I'm much more looser this year. I'm just ready to come in to throw the ball and just take my chances. You know, Jeff's a great bowler. He's going for a three-peat. And the number one seed, John, he's an awesome ball. I'm just going to take my chances, have fun with it. Well, you qualified quite some time ago, and you've been sitting back hoping your score would hold. What was that like? Um, actually, I felt pretty good about it, sitting in second. It wasn't like the, the third guy where I had to worry about it, so I needed two people to go by my score. So I felt pretty good about it. All right, and the money? Are you thinking about the money? No, not at all. Let's go have some fun. I don't know. Do you believe that at home? They're not thinking about the money. Should I believe that? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, we love both of you guys so much, and we wish you all the best. Back over to you, John. Trina, thank you. Uh, John Zappi guaranteed at least $2,500. You will watch, and, and you wait, and watch these two guys uh, duke it out and you try to be as good as you were when you won nine times in a row this season it's been a great year for you yeah it's been it's been unbelievable uh, i just can't imagine anything better i mean they had such a great year and uh you know i hope it carries over today i know these two guys right here whichever one that's going to be tough so let's go <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to it good luck thank you we are back with the challengers match right after this the championship show on cna Welcome back to Woburn. It's our championship show on the Candlefin Challenge, and we are ready for the Challengers match. A one string match between these two heavy hitters. Jeff Surrett to go first, Bob Whitcomb the opponent. Jeff, of course, the two-time reigning champ, overall champ, looking for a unprecedented three-peat today. Lanes 35 and 36 in use. Oh, oh wow. What a way to open. <laughs> I guess he's ready, John. <laughs> no doubt about it. Looking to get that $5,000 top prize. Jeff joining us from Tewksbury, Massachusetts. He's been a regular. And he seems to find a way to get into this last show. <laughs> one of the last two. He's himself the seven and eight. A couple pieces of wood out in front. One rolls off. Doesn't want that one to straighten out. Possibilities here with the wood out in front. This would be a huge start, one game. He does, and he sets himself up for $50 in bonus money. Fair on strike for Jeff Surrett. Let's see if Bob Whitcomb can match early. Not a lot of room for errors, we often say, and this is a one-game challengers round, and there's heightened importance today, of course. Here's Bob, who was on the championship show two years ago, fell in the challenger's round to Dave Hodge. That was at Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill. He says he actually prefers the lanes here at the Bolodrome. Feels a little more comfortable. Chance for a spare. Yes. So a mark for Bob Whitcomb in the first. A 
you see a replay of that spear. Bob was the 0304. World Candleman Bowling Congress Bowler of the Year. Talented bowler. That is a title that John Zaffy has at the moment for 06 07. He's had a great year. He'll be coming up in the championship match. Drops eight, leaves the three and the five, and a tough piece of wood out in front, trying to make it two marks in a row. Yes, and that was a great shot. Made it look easy. So we're perfect so far. Four boxes, four marks. Nothing open yet. A pair of spares for Bob, a strike and a spare for Jeff, looking for three in a row and some bonus money early. Jeff back on the head pin, a little full. Drives. Drops five in that spare. He's got the kingpin in the center and then the goal post, four, seven, six, ten, left and right. Let's see what he's decides to go. I think I'd go after the four, seven. Now he's going the other way. Leaves the ten. His third ball. Targeting that last spin, all 10 of them. 10 box to 45 for Jeff. Jeff now box four. Oh. He gets all of them. Well, he hasn't missed a head pin yet. Made one mistake, if you call it a mistake, in the third where he came in a little full on the head pin, but he's got three marks out of four boxes and two of them big ones like that strike you just saw. Now Bob Whitcomb up for... His fill on the second mark and looking for, of course, $50 in bonus money. Gonna leave the four, three, six, ten. He's gonna try to split the three and the six and hopefully he can hop the three into that four pin. Well, he tried it off the wall, almost converted it as well, leaving the ten. Trying to match the 10 box from Jeff here in the third. Yes. No one's left to pin up. Oh, he matches the strike put up by Jeff. The hits just keep wow. on coming between these two. <laughs> One pin advantage for Jeff. You see the replay of that last strike by Bob Whitcomb. A <laughs> little fist bump, he is yeah. thrilled. Oh, one of them blinked. First time we missed the head pin. Half Worcester to the right, working on a strike. Yeah. Not the fill he wanted, only five. A little chink in the armor. Makes it an eight box. Jeff told me he thinks it's gonna take high 130s, 140s to win this challengers match. Box six for Jeff. He's done it both ways in his two years as the overall champ. He's won in the challengers round and then again in the championship round and also won uh, via the bye, having to bowl just the two stringer. Uh, last year he bowled a, a fellow named uh, Craig, Craig uh, Holbrook. I've heard of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 140, 115. And then uh, he met John Bird in the finals. It was 289, 206. So Jeff in those three games rolled 429. 78 is, uh, slows down a bit with two open boxes. Eight and a 10, five and six. Big chance for Bob now to follow up that strike in the fourth. Two spares and a, a 10 box and a strike. Now he's in the fifth. And he will take out six. And again, he's going to shoot at the three, six, ten in the right with that four pin. But this time he has a piece of wood looking at him. Not a real good angle to cover the four. Something's going to have to come off the wall, off the right side wall to clear out that four, I'm sure. So he makes a little mistake on the fill and ties the match up through boxes completed. Needs to match the eight to stay tied. And 
Oh, it was there. It Wanted was that there. a ball ago. Yeah. Takes the lead by two pins, though, through five, 70 to 68. Now he's opposite of 10. Good crowd here again at the Wolverine Bowl Drum. Struggles a little contagious for these two in five and six. Oh, oh a what a recovery. Spare. Circle that one, that could be huge. Here's that spare, just tripping out that 10 pin, but what a spare, as John said. Jeff in the seventh takes out seven, leaves with three, six, ten. Piece of wood in between the three and the six. Would look like if he gets a piece of that three pin, probably will get the spare. Oh, missing the object. So three open frames now after getting three marks in the first four boxes, he's open the next three. Repeat on the line, Jeff Surrett, hoping to make it three years in a row, but he's got some work to do. Bob with the momentum. Four in the six. Piece of wood in front of the six, also one right next to the four pin. Jeff taking a, a long look at it. Not so sure if he can catch the four pin in that wood and have the wood swing around from the back side of the six pin. Oh, that wood will prevent that from happening. Let's see what he tries. That's what he's trying and just didn't get a piece of that wood. So he'll be open again. Three shy of the uh, century mark at 97, but his uh, game has slowed down after that fast start. Four in a row open. Huge ball for Bob Whitcomb. Can take control of the match with a big fill and another mark. Leads by two plus this ball. Oh, and he can't take advantage. He goes full spread eagle. Lead is now six through boxes completed. Just one more after wow. that. New life for the two time champ. Jeff has to like those developments. Total of eight. The lead's at five through boxes completed. Seven, 92 to 87. Now he's opposite at 10. A mark would uh, help him in a big way, of course. Otherwise, it's gonna be anybody's match. Oh, he tripped out the four pin, leaves himself the three, six, 10. And it's looking better and better. Looks like that wood is just set up to sweep from left to right. Clear out the three, six, and ten. This would be his fifth mark, fourth spare. Yes! Five pin lead plus his next ball. Jeff for the ninth. Needs to make some noise with some marks. Oh, looked like he was going to be left with a four, seven, ten. Wood kept moving and cleared out the four, and then finally the seven. Leaves the ten pin. Tough pin for a right-hander. Misses. Gets it the second time around, but... A huge difference without the mark heading into the 10th. He needs a minimum of 20 pins, and he needs a break from Bob Whitcomb. They keep going. It's the 6 and 10 remaining. They'll get one more ball. 117 plus this bonus ball.
Eight more. 125. Well, it's all in the hands of Bobby. Doesn't need another mark as long as the fill is decent on this spare. So this ball becomes so very, very important. Can't make a mistake on it. Oh, that was big. The six and 10 go down. Last two, and that gets him eight. One eighteen and counting. And the spare. I think that's gonna ice it for him. That, that should be, he should be the winner. Putting an end to the quest for a three-peat from Jeff Surrett is Bob Whitcomb. And that makes it official, folks. This is a $50 ball, though, and you can finish up with three spares in a row, and well, if he throw a strike on that last spare, if he was to get this five pin, then he would earn himself another 50, so. And there's $50 in bonus money. Jeff Surrett said it was gonna take high 130s, 140s, and that is absolutely right. That's what Bob Whitcomb is gonna get to. Nine more. 148, 125, a 23 pin victory. And Bob Whitcomb is going to get a chance at the big box, the $5,000. He'll meet John Zappi next. Welcome back to Uber and glad you're with us on CNA. John Holt, Dan Murphy, Trina Fernandez, and our CNA crew, and all set for the championship match. After 36 weeks, it's down to just two. John Zappi, who won nine weeks in a row this season versus the guy who just won the Challengers match, convincingly, too, as it turns out, 148-125, Bob Whitcomb. Here we go, two-game Challengers match. Take the uh, better two-game total for that $5,000 top prize. Left-hander John Zappi drops 10. What a start. What a hot start to the Challengers match, and we may be seeing it again here in the championship match. So that's the way Jeff Surrett started off as well. But the result wasn't good for Jeff. So maybe the strike's not the what to start off with, John. <laughs> I'll take him any way I can get him, any time I can get him. <laughs> never want to turn him down. Two, four, six, ten for John. Seven total on the fill. John with an average of 128. Feels he needs to bowl above his average to be victorious today. A nine, up to 26 through two. Bob Whitcomb after posting that 148. All set to go in the championship match. Drops four. These three bowlers, by the way, Jeff Surrett, Zappi, and Whitcomb, are all on the same world team that will compete this fall in the World Championships, teaming up uh, with Craig Holbrook, among others, on that team in an attempt to take down the Canadian team. It's a pretty good lineup. Ten box for Bob. The U.S. wants to get that championship back. They, they dominated that uh, tournament early, but lately it's been in the Canadians that have dominated that world tournament. I like our chances, though, with uh, that <laughs> trio combining with Holbrook and others. Spread eagle for uh, Whitcomb, leaving the 2 4 7 3 6 10. Bob from Halifax, Massachusetts, on the south shore. So he'll be open this time. Not like the Challengers match, where he opened with two spares. We'll have two open frames. So the early league goes to uh, 
our top seed, John Zappi. Oh, nice out by Bob Whitcomb, 19. Seven pin advantage after two for John. John Zappi, as you remember, his streak, it started back in uh, November of this year. Beat Sean Baker, 122-112, followed up by a championship round against Gary Carrington. Beat him 262-245. Then it was Tim Goodwin, 272-284 for John. And then came a, a big match uh, against Dan Gauthier through 290 and lost to, uh, to John's 312, which was his qualifying score. And then in order, he defeated Rich Moran, Brian Crowell, Joe Tabernese, and Stu Bergman again. Ed Tri Triang Tringali and uh, Dave Hodge before losing it just by two pins to Jeff Bogia, 256-254 back in January. Those nine consecutive wins were good enough to better the record held by Det Klein. Yeah, Det Klein held that for a number of years, too. Two in a row open for John, now in the fourth. He's the first to tell you it's been an unbelievable year for him. Nine match win streak here in the show, plus the uh, Bowler of the Year honors. There you see the problem he has. From back here, it looks like uh, you, you can't miss this. Well, the wood is liable to go left and right and leave that nine pin. So John took a lot walk right up to the foul line to take a good look at it before he decides how he's going to play this shot. Got it done. John actually felt, told me in the pre-match interviews that he felt that Jeff Surrett was the favorite because Jeff had won two years in a row, but obviously now his focus is on Bob Whitcomb with Jeff falling out in the uh, Challengers match. It'd be a pretty tough thing to handicap these three guys. One, the eight, and the ten left for Bob. Looking for his first match, uh, first mark in this match. Got the big $5,000 top prize up for grabs, but also some big money for a member of the audience, potentially, between games one and two. Fernando Silva from Danvers, Massachusetts, will take part in our strike challenge. Should he bowl a strike, he will get $975. <laughs> That's a nice piece of change. That jackpot has been building for uh, most of the season. Box four now for Bob, game one of two. All of them oh. go. First mark, and it's a big one. Strike in the fourth. You see a replay. Seven, eight, and nine left, and they almost went down simultaneously. Result is that strike. John's Phil now following the spare in the fourth. Some four. Oh. Four horsemen to the right plus the four and seven took out everything but that ten. Ten box to 60 for John Zappi. And you really can't tell John's story without giving a mention to his wife, Leanne, who has just provided great support. She's here for every taping, and he made special mention of her to me. There's a look. Nice to have someone so supportive of your efforts. Takes out eight. Gives himself the 5-7. like a red line, the ball could carry him off that wood in front of the five pin and right into the seven. I'd like it better if I was a right-hander coming from right to left though instead of left-hander. Let's see. Oh. 
open two in a row for John. <clears throat> Another 10, though. Each pin is going to be crucial in this one, up to 70. Well, we have an all-star lineup in bowlers today. We also have to congratulate my partner here, John, for receiving a New England Sports Emmy Award. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> That's for nice work, going, John. work in my other life at yeah. WFSB in Hartford. It's a good feeling. That's uh, very nice. Nine-pin drop for Bob. Everything but the six-pin. Trying to make it two in a row. And he does. I was debating. I think I, you know, your second ball is your gambling ball. I think I might go after that four pin and piece of wood and see if I can get something coming off the wall. He's trying. Oh, he's going to yes. get it. What a shot. Sorry, Bob, I can only give you $50 for that, but that was worth a lot more than that. That's one for the instructional video, how to get it done. Bob Whitcomb showing us all. Box seven for John Zappi. John's had two marks, strike in the first frame and then a spare in the fourth. He's two in the back row. Wants that wood to stay on to give him a shot at the nine and the 10. That wood could snap right in front of this 10 pin though and take out just a nine. Oh. Tried to just get a piece of it. That was the shot. Didn't miss it by much. As you can tell by the moan of the crowd, they all knew exactly what he was trying to do. Up to 79. Oh, there's a big one. He is apparently back with a strike here in the eighth. And that was a quick one. Knocking out all the candles on that one were a big strike in the eighth. Now, meanwhile, John Whitcomb, uh, Bob Whitcomb, has got a string of three in a row for 50. Everyone after this is 50 in this streak. And he's got a good shot at another one. The righty will target that seven. His third spare in a row, fourth the mark overall. Ooh. Didn't think he could uh, fit one in there. Wasn't much room between that wood. If he capped it, he probably still would have carried it. Ten blocks instead, and the run of marks ends at three. Each ball, each box under a microscope. They always remember you can't make a mistake. I'm sure Bob would say, I should have had that one. Having lost in the Challengers round two years ago at Pilgrim Lanes, Bob feels he's looser coming in this time around. Certainly was in evidence, the Challengers match. Had the momentum these last few boxes, but missing that seven pin, now missing the head pin. Ooh. And not converting that, which she probably hit that shot, but left the seven pin. John sitting on a strike. Momentum swings back John Zappi's way. Couple tens. 14 pin. Deficit, that's what John's facing, but of course he's going to cut into that with these first two balls. Of course, he's one third of the way of taking some money out of Dan Gothier's pocket, too. Dan's going to get the entire $1,000 if no one else can duplicate that triple strike. 
four horsemen left, plus the nine in the back. Second ball on the fill. Total of eight. Lead is reduced to just six pins for Bob Woodcock now. One oh six through nine for John. First of two games. It was a three twelve two game total that got John Zappi that top spot, that top seed. Bob Whitcomb came in second at 311, just a pin shy of John. That pin determined who got the bye. Doesn't mean much now. They're both engaged here in the championship match. Oh, what a oh. shot. Terrific spare in the 10th by John Zappi. That's, this is one of the reasons he won nine matches in a row. Terrific shot. Bonus ball here in the 10th. Gets him seven more. 123, solid game one for John Zappi. A little bit under his average, but he'll take it. The head bend, nine of 10. Oh, it didn't turn enough. Makes that six pin a little more difficult. Bob's gonna walk up to the foul line, take a look. I would say he would have to come up on the left hand tip, turn that wood and drive it back. I don't think the ball will come off the wall if he hits it on the red line. And that's what he's trying to do. Missed opportunity. for that strike challenge. Fernando Silva from Danvers, Mass. So everyone knows the International Candlepin Association is co-sponsor of the show with, and that's three different groups, New Hampshire, Candlepin Association, Massachusetts, and another great shot by John, uh, by Bob Whitcomb in the 10th, and also the West New England Association. But this week, the New Hampshire Canopin Bowling Association, as we watch that replay, will sponsor the strike challenges last week. So thank you for all that you do up there in New Hampshire for us. Big fill of nine. Bob Whitcomb has the edge. Eight pin lead in his pursuit of zappiness. We'll see if he can finish it off in game two. The strike challenge is next. Hello and welcome back everybody. Well, it's the final show and we have one lucky audience member that's going for $975 for the candle pin challenge today. One lucky winner uh, and it's Fernando Silva. How are you feeling, Fernando? Uh, a little bit nervous, but warming up I felt good. So hopefully it'll go down. It takes one ball and big, big, take the big money. Big money, one ball. Where are you from, Fernando? Danvers, Mass. All right, we'll go get this for everybody in Danvers. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, a lot of anticipation. $975 on the line. And Fernando is the guy. Let's see what he can get done. Checks the approach. Got his towel. He's ready to go. It's a little dapper in that Strike Challenge t-shirt. <laughs> He'll have a chance. Oh. The moan of the crowd. Chance for $50 for a spare, though. Good attempt. Looking at the one, two, 50 bucks if he can take him down. Yes, $50 for Fernando Silva. 
and a nice reaction from the crowd. Coming close. Coming close, my friend. Back to the big boys now in our championship match. Bob Whitcomb heading into game two with an eight pin advantage. 131-123. I'm not sure if you know the answer to this, Dan, but the question we're no doubt gonna get, does that jackpot carry over to it, next year? It does carry over, oh. folks, it does. That's the word from uh, the ICBA, it will carry over. So starting next season, it'll be worth $1,000. And again, thank you to the New Hampshire Camelpin Bowling Association for sponsoring this week's Strike Challenge. Bob will be open here, box one of the second game. Gets a 10. Every pin crucial, no doubt here. $2,500, the difference between what the runner-up and the winner will get. The runner-up guaranteed $2,500. The winner will double that with a $5,000 top prize. The three all by itself, and then the four, seven in the left-hand corner. This would behind the three, but doesn't look like it has a good angle on the four and seven. Oh, oh yes, three. it does. <laughs> that is a terrific shot as well. Boy, we're seeing some fantastic spear conversions here. Just enough to keep that three pin in play. Dances it right across into the four and seven. For his fifth mark of the match. Here's the top seed to start game two. Looking at just two pins now for the third ball. One and count opposite Bob's 10. Takes out seven. He's the three, six, seven. Again, ideally you want to split the three, six, but with that wood behind, if he comes in heavy in the three, something could come off the right side wall for that seven. He'll be open the first two. Nine to the 10. Bob with the fill. Chance to uh, stretch the distance between himself and the top seed. Seven more. Look at the five, seven, nine. Delicate shot, cutting that five into the seven. Yo, he, oh, he cut it in front of the seven. My. Oh. I wouldn't think that would be possible without knocking the seven pin down. too far over in the channel, so it's a nine. Take a look at this. Jumps it in front of the seven, comes off the sidewall, and back again, never touched the seven pin. Box four. Five, seven, eight. Piece of wood looking directly at him. Another one behind, both around the five pin. Oh. 
so open a couple in a row. Well, that is eight for Bob in the fourth. Even a couple pins up, moves him to 44 in this game. John with a chance, opposite the two open boxes from Bob Whitcomb. Chance to tighten it up. Get seven a fall. Oh, yeah. you heard it from the audience. You're kidding me. I thought he would cover that nine. Gain one and count. And he does with a 10 box. Slid that four pin off the spot, or is that the two pin? First mark for John. Everything but the kingpin, that five. Bob directing traffic, wanted that wood to roll out of the way. It did, but it also left it in a pretty good position to the left in case he were to miss it to the left, the ball could carry him off that pin. It's all set up for him. Yes. So his second mark in game two, both spares, comes in the fifth. Big fill. And it is a big fill, a five pin again. Oh, it's a strike! I didn't think it had enough momentum to take that five pin out of there. And a dramatic turn here in box six. Strike on spare for Bob Wickham. Look at the replay. Everything went down and just enough Momentum to come back and take that five pin down. Done. And he gets a strike on spare. Punch for punch between these two. Just a little nudge on the six pin. Both bowlers setting himself up for some bonus money. I think John's thinking about that right now. He's just thinking about stringing them together and cut into this lead. Eight with another ball to go. Two and five. Got to be concentrating on that two pin. Go by the two, chances of making that spare diminish greatly. Well, he got the two pin, but just too full. Drove it straight back. That was a tough, tough miss there. You almost think you don't even miss the shot. You hit the object pin, but just too full. We've got a good one here in game two. John Zappi still with some work to do for the finish of the championship match. I want to show you what Chris Orlando was presented with. Framed picture, autographed by uh, many of the bowlers who appear on the show. Chris is one of our loyal supporters, and with that wonderful gift. Uh, that was that's a great picture. Good for Chris. Been an intricate part of our show the last several years. Doesn't miss a taping. <laughs> oh boy, Chris! You can see the big <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> All our loyal viewers and those of you that have also attended in person this season at one point or another, we thank you and look forward to. Uh, Similar support next season as we return in September. Bob Whitcomb in the lead at the moment, looking to make it three marks in a row. Spare in the fifth, strike in the sixth. Now here he is in the seventh. Nine of ten, three in a row would get him bonus money and more importantly some breathing room as he Tries to take away the title here from John Zappi. You know that John's going to make one more run at him. 
He's got to build up a lead. Oh, this misses that for $50, but more importantly, the streak of Mark stop. So a nine instead, nine in the fill, and a nine box up to 92 in this game. Right back on the head pin, drops eight. Difficult spare, though. That wood is, is not in a very good position to carry both the four and the eight. And again, Bob takes a good look at it at the foul line. You can see the problem. If he hits in the red line, you may come off the wall. But ideally, you want to come high in the wood and turn it and drive it back. Oh, okay. got both of them. Very That's nice a done. big one. Let's see what happens here. Yep, comes off the wall. Actually, Wood nudges this four pin, and four takes out the eight. Four boxes remaining for John. I was hoping that seven pin would go. Everything but the 10. Now he's opposite the spare from Bob. Really needs to match it. Oh, well, he wants one of those to go. Looks like the ball could carry him off that and take out the four pin. Can the wood take the six or come out of the channel and take the six? He's got to find a way. Oh, yes. not yes. done. He's not done yet. I tell you, he's not going to go without a fight. The ball does take the four, and the wood does take the six. So pressure back on Bob, although he's leading, he cannot afford to make a mistake. No doubt one of the biggest fills of his bowling career right here. It's worth eight. It's a good one. And again, he has to deal with a bad piece of wood out in front. Oh, it can't be any worse. It can't be any worse. You just got to cap it and hope. Um, slid by it. Got it for 10 to 120 in this game. 251 total with a box to go. He'd love some kind of a mark in this final frame. That would force John. He, oh, John's going to have to mark out anyways, but this mark here may put John into a double strike situation. Just one left up. Well, the seven pin fell and almost clipped that eight pin going by. And again, he has to negotiate a piece of wood out in front. <laughs> Not much room to get by. That cost him. Well, let's see if John Zappi can pull another one out. He's going to have to have three pretty good marks. One thirty in this game, real consistent. One thirty-one in the first game, two sixty-one total. Big anticipation. It's a big nine pin drop. <laughs> oh. Hold on to your seats, folks. This is a long ways from over. If you had to shoot at a pin, uh, you'd rather have it be the 10 pin rather than the seven pin for a lefty. But it has to look like a pencil down there. A hush of the crowd. No, no, I knew when he let it go, it was too far right. 
He's going to need a double strike in the 10th to catch Bob Whitcomb. There it is, about 15 seconds too late. Double strike two, he needs 22 pins to tie. Oh, no! Gave it his all. <laughs> oh, what a great match. Bob Whitcomb is gonna be our 0607 champion. Not sure if he's convinced of that yet. <laughs> Hasn't broken the smile out. Fell short two years ago, losing in the challengers round. Eight more. And Bob Whitcomb is your champ as he beats one of his good friends in the Candlepin community, John Zappi, by four pins. That's what it came down to the whole season. 36 weeks in the championship show. We're back to wrap it up right after this on CNN. Back to wrap up the final show of the season, and what a show it was. Bob Whitcomb taking the championship. Uh, it was just terrific. And Start with the Challengers match, they went back and forth, and, and Bob won out, and, and he just carried it over. Both bowls made a few mistakes going along the way, but neither of them gave up, and geez, it wasn't for that seven or ten pin for John, we might still be here in overtime. <laughs> we'll speak with Bob and give him his $5,000 uh, winner's check here in just a second, but first, Trina Fernandez with the runner-ups. Trina? Thank you very much, guys. Well, I'm over here with Jeff and John, and neither one of you can really be too disappointed because you've had a great season, both of you. And you get $1,000 from the ICBA. John Zappi, $2,500 from the ICBA. But, Jeff, just really quickly, you had a great run this season. You didn't quite get the three-peat. How are you feeling? No, I feel good. I'm, I started out strong, had a couple bad ones, but uh, Bobby Bowl, great, and it was a good match. It was a good match. And yours was an exciting match as well, yep. down to the wire. Yep, that's all I... That's so all he wanted was to be down right to the end. I didn't want to get blown out, neither one of us. Uh, Bobby's a great guy, awesome bowler, and just glad to have a chance to bowl him. Trina, thank you. We have a special presentation for Bob. Congratulations. A awesome. $5,000 check from the uh, ICBA. Yes, again, uh, on behalf of the ICBA, John, uh, Bob, great bowling all year long. And, thank you very much. And boy, I'll tell you, you're really a uh, true champion. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You uh, joke. These guys are friends of yours. You yeah, jokingly said friends. to me before the match that I should mention that uh, you have more here than those two combined. Absolutely. Well, today you you had the better <laughs> game too, just a little bit better. Yeah, I just made some nice spares when I had to, and just kept fighting, hanging in there because I know John and Jeff are both awesome balls, and uh, I just had to keep marking. That's all it was. Just keep throwing balls in there, and put the pressure on. Bob, did you think the bowling gods were against you with some of that wood the last few boxes? Ah. <laughs> Yeah, yes and no, but you know, you just take it as it comes. You know, there's a couple I could have made both those shots too if I hit the cap right on the ninth box and I just missed the one in the tenth. But uh, the bowling gods are with me and <laughs> I'm with it and it makes up for two years ago. There you go. There awesome. you go. Congratulations. Some tough competition today. Very well done. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And we thank the audience all season for their great support and you at home as well. For Dan Murphy and Trina Fernandez, I'm John Holt. We'll see you next September on CN8 for the Candlepin Challenge.